All right, guy. One more, guys. One more yak at the the screen this morning as we get going. I wanted to talk about one other subject. Our dog that's coming over from France for that officer and back in Missouri. Um, will be over in about a couple weeks, and he will be going right into the LASD uh, canine boot camp and going through their program there for the six, eight weeks, whatever they do there. And then once he goes through that, he will be going back with me. I will probably drive him back to Missouri myself. So, again, we're, we're looking for donations, guys. Uh, I put in $100. Somebody else put in $100. We had a, our pot was started at about $200. If you go onto the page that I will put a link to this video on, you will see that uh, a few other people have thrown in five, ten dollar amounts, and it's starting to get to two fifty. And we just need that snowball to go, guys. And it's that time of year where it's real tough on everybody. But if you guys can even uh, afford, you know, you get your check or whatever, you get some money, throw in five dollars. We'd really appreciate it. It's just it's a matter of, of using crowdsourcing the way it should be used. We get enough of you out there that makes it easier for everybody to to uh, benefit some something that's 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 needed. You know, um, this officer is replacing his dog that he lost in 2016 that um, ended up dying in the line of duty. He was out tracking a uh, violent felon, and the dog went down. He sucked up a seed, and it infected him, and he ended up losing his dog in his arms a couple days later and uh, lost his dog, and it was very traumatic to him. He didn't even get to want to even touch a canine. He went basically back to the, to the court and uh, handled the court system, and they worked in the jails for a while. He's been doing his thing as an officer, as a sheriff, uh, back there, but he hasn't had a canine. He's ready for another canine. His his uh, sergeant and his department are all re really looking forward to this. They're getting his car set up right now. Um, and then because of the COVID, everything's tied on everything, right? The, uh, the uh, ability to turn out that product as far as getting their cars outfitted and all that, all that's been slowed down because of the COVID. So, but he's working on that now. He's putting that together. He's getting ready for the dog. <clears throat> and he'll... Uh, Real excited. I, he talks to me every day. He gives me a, a message and says good morning. And, and he's always curious and pushing on, you know, when am I going to get my dog? You know, you got to really appreciate that. The, the man is a, a uh, experienced canine handler and understands it. You know, that's, that's a good subject to talk about. You know, you get into law enforcement. And I see these guys. I went through that uh, bomb, bomb dog class with one of my dogs and got him certified as a bomb dog and was lucky enough to be able to hang around the guys for six, eight weeks as that course went through. And it was a lot of fun, and uh, you know, getting to talk shop with them and getting them to be around that uh, community was really a lot of joy for me. Um, and and I did well with my dog. I was really impressed with uh, how he came out and how he did his job and the the uh, scent work towards the bomb dogs. But uh, you get a green officer, and most of the time with these, the departments, if you didn't know how it works, they, they usually do set a, a brand new green officer. And the way it works, it's usually somebody that's doing real well as as far as um, building his career. He may be relatively new to law enforcement, you know, two, three years, whatever he's got under his belt. And they want this person to uh, go into administration or go into something higher within the department. They feel they've got it what it takes. They, uh, they give him a little perk. They give him a little cherry on the top. And if they're into it and they have the passion to do it, they let them go out to be a canine officer. And usually they'll work as a canine officer two, three, two or three years, four years, and they'll migrate into something else and they'll grow in their, their careers. It's, it's only a transitionary type of a thing most of the time. Um, and then every now and then you'll get somebody like this officer back in Missouri that loves it so much he doesn't want to stop working with canines. He wants to do his job and work the animal, and he understands what that means. So... Um, you get a green officer, they don't know, and they go out and they do the thing, and a lot of it's a macho thing, right? But um, you get somebody like him, and he understands the full ramifications. I call it knowing your role, meaning he's really looking forward to, to getting creed so that he can be a community service to his community, which means going to the schools, going out and doing a lot of PR, working with the kids, and as soon as this COVID's over, he'll be able to do all that. And he's looking forward, because that's what his last dog did. You know, He was really, really pleased with his last dog because that dog fulfilled that part of the community type of a uh, process. So he's looking forward to Creed coming back and he's going to fill that role as um, a uh, on-call type of thing. And all the other departments know that he'll have this dog. And if they need him in, in a school for a demo or whatever it is, they'll ask him. Or if he's got a uh, tracking situation, they need him, he'll get a call. And so he's going to be kind of a backup type of a, 
a situation he's not going to be on full time. He'll be, they'll know he has a canine. He'll, they'll, they'll know that he'll, that resource is available to them, and when they need it, they'll call on him. And uh, he's really looking forward to it. And, he's, and what I really love about it more than anything is he has a really good understanding of uh, what it's all about. <laughs> Meaning that most departments usually have four to five canines. You know, you've got four shifts. You have a first shift, second shift, third shift. That's in one day. But then you got to cover everybody's days off. So you usually have what's called a fourth shift. That person's the one that, that fills everybody else's days off. And that's not always. Every department schedules their scheduling differently. But in a general sense, that's kind of the way it flows. So you always need uh, four or five dogs to cover all those shifts, right? And... Uh, one of those shifts a lot of times is the type of shift that the dogs are working during the daytime. They do a lot of the public relations. They do a lot of going to the schools. They go do a lot of um, uh, demos for the public, that kind of thing, where um, the, that accents and, and benefits the department for public relations, right? That's important, um, their, their image to the public, you know? And so making the value of your canine unit and being aware of that is important. You know, you can't just have SWAT entry dogs having a dog with such an edge on them is a liability. You need that kind of dog in a lot of ways, SWAT entry, uh, to go after the really aggressive felons and, and violent felons that you need to get out of a building or whatever it may be. But at the same time, not all the dogs in the department can be have that sharp an edge because then you're not really rounding off or filling the full potential of your canine unit, right? So there's always a need for that that one dog that's out there that's a little bit more social and able to be out with the kids and, and being able to do that sort of thing for public relations. So that's what Creed's going to be doing when he goes to Missouri. And it's really a cool thing to, to know that that's going to be what happens with this dog. So that's pretty cool. So, But if you can give, guys, please, five ten dollars you know, send $5, put in the kitty, it, it, it all matters. And as time goes along, over the next few weeks, if I can keep pushing on you guys, hopefully that amount will go up and it'll mean something and it'll actually go towards offsetting some of this cost. I mean, uh, Mr. Uh, Joaquin Lefebvre and that's donating the dog, what's that, twelve fifteen hundred dollars $1,500 of dog flesh plus the training, plus the time, plus the cost of shipping the dog over here, and then I'm going to have to drive him back. I'm going to have to get a rental. And that's going to cost money. So it's it's all very helpful, and we appreciate it, guys. Thank you very much. I'll put that post up again on my Facebook page. I already did uh, the last couple of days, and then I'll try to um, link it here in this in this video. So, uh, Mark Farashi, Protect Dog Training, up in the high desert with Buddy, and we're out for our little uh, morning routine doing our potty break. Come, bud, bud. Come, bud, bud. Yay, yeah, good boy. Yeah, good boy. He says, I'm a happy dog. I'm a happy dog. I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good day, guys. Thank you.